Honoring the King James Bible by Dr. Solomon Ayorkian, Part 1 Number 16. How are we saved? We are all sinners, but when we confess our sins to Jesus, He washes our sins away with His blood that He shed on Calvary's cross. K.J. Luke 23.33 And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified Him. Is Calvary important to you? It's mentioned only once in the New Testament, and that's in K.J. Luke 23.33. Calvary is a hill outside Jerusalem where Jesus was crucified between two thieves. Luke 23.33 in the NIV reads, When they came to the place called Skull, there they crucified him. The NIV totally omits Calvary. That's sad. 17. In Hebrews 9.22, KJ, Without shedding of blood is no remission. In the NIV, Hebrews 9.22 reads, And without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. The NIV omits remission and exchanges it for forgiveness. Remission and forgiveness are close, but they are not synonyms. Forgiveness is scriptural, but who has the permission to change God's word? Remission means to release from the guilt and penalty of our sins. Remission goes beyond and further than forgiveness. 18. K.J. Matthew 26, 28 reads, Jesus says, For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. In the NIV, Matthew 26, 28, it reads, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. The NIV replaces the word testament with the word covenant and replaces shed with poured. The NIV leaves out New Testament. The NIV doesn't even call it a new covenant. Covenant means an agreement between two or more parties. Testament means a will to go into force after death. Jesus died on the cross of Calvary for our sins. He shed his blood for the remission of our sins. We can get forgiveness, cleansing, and salvation by confessing our sins, accepting Jesus into our heart, allowing the Holy Spirit to come into our hearts, and then following Jesus and his word. Following Jesus and his word proves our sincerity and proves that we have faith in him. Have you, dear reader, asked Jesus to be your Lord and Savior? If not, take a minute now. Bow your head and ask Jesus into your heart. If you do, you will have the remission of your sins and you will have eternal life. Actually, the Bible states in Romans 10, 9, and 10 that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, you confess Jesus as Lord and believe that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. This is what's necessary actually says nothing in the Bible about asking Jesus into our heart. The Bible does say, confess Christ as Lord, believe God, raised him from the dead. 19. Back to the precious blood of Christ. In Colossians 1.14, KJ, it says, in whom we have redemption through his, Jesus' blood, even the forgiveness of sins. In the NIV it reads, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. The NIV takes out, takes away, through his blood. You can call that improving. I call it robbery. You can call it modern interpretation. I call it irreverence. You can call it updating the English. I call it perverting the word. However this is America, you are free to believe as you wish. You be the judge of what version you wish to use to feed your soul. To gain more knowledge of Jesus, to have a more solid rock to fight the enemy, to battle the trials and tribulations that come your way, you be the judge 
as to which version of God's word you wish to hide in your heart. 20. Who is Lucifer? He is the devil. That's one of his many names. How do you and I know that? Because we read about him, the devil, in God's word, in the King James Bible printed first in 1611. If the KJ version was not available, you'd never know that, because the NIV omits the name Lucifer. Turn to KJ Isaiah 14.12, and you will read, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down from the ground, which didst weaken the nations? This is the only place in the Bible where the name Lucifer appears. Pretty important, wouldn't you say? In most all other translations, the personal name Lucifer is taken out, and in its place is put Daystar. Most all other translations of Isaiah 14.12 say, How are you fallen from heaven, O star of the morning, son of dawn? You have been cut down to earth. You have weakened the nations, New American Standard. Similarly, in the Amplified Bible, it reads, Isaiah 14, 12, How have you fallen from heaven, O light bringer and day star, son of the morning? How you have been cut to the ground, you who weakened and laid low the nations. I repeat, most all Newer translations of Isaiah 14, 12 omit Lucifer. They add insult to injury by referring to him, Lucifer, Satan, as the morning star. But the real Bible, King James, A.V. 1611, tells us of the real and only morning star in Revelation 22, 16. I, Jesus have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. The newer versions tend to make Lucifer and Jesus one and the same. Don't fall for it. Twenty-one. No matter what one's station in life, in the church or in government is, no one has the authority to change, alter, or steal God's word. God says in Jeremiah 23, 30-32, Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that steal my words, every one from his neighbor, Behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that use their tongues, and say, He saith. Behold, I am against them that prophesy false dreams, and cause my people to err by their lies. 22. Look at John seven fifty two through 8, 11 in your King James Bible. I won't print that portion of twelve verses, but basically it's about the woman caught in the act of adultery and brought to Jesus by the Pharisees. In the NIV it reads, The earliest and most reliable manuscripts and other ancient witnesses do not have John 7, 53 through 8, 11. The NIV wrongly does not specify in which older manuscripts and which other ancient witnesses omit this section. I say the NIV and most all of the modern versions contain a multitude of distortions and cause believers to doubt the scriptures. 23. What is the most memorized verse in the Bible? What one verse would you use to explain the gospel if you had only five minutes to witness? I think the vast majority of us would use John 3.16. Has that precious verse been tampered with? Yes. In John 3.16, KJ, which we are so familiar with, says, 
For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Isn't the word begotten, that verse, precious and important? It surely is. In the NIV, the word begotten is removed. The children in Sunday school here in the USA and other English-speaking countries will not have the opportunity to memorizing, of memorizing the John 3.16 of the KJ that we grew up with. In churches across the USA and England, the KJ Bible is being replaced in large measure with the NIV or with some other versions. Look it up in the NIV.